welcome to Food Plus Freedom. It's getting a little chilly out there. That's okay. Weather is weather. And in my book, as long as we don't have an extreme one way or another, I'm pretty happy about it. But the changing in the weather makes it so that I change how I am storing my food, plus what food I'm growing. Today, I'm gonna to tell you about sweet potatoes, how to make sure they're cured, and how to store them so that you don't lose any of your sweet potatoes at all. If you like what you're hearing in our videos, please like and subscribe so we can continue making these food-loving freedom videos. Plus, go to our website, foodplusfreedom.com and join us. You will get a free ebook. You get either PDF file or ebook mobile file, whichever you choose. And it's about gaining freedom, food, supplies, self-sufficiency. There are over 50 different ways for you to gain self-sufficiency right where you are right now. Some of them are just skills. Most of them don't cost any money at all to learn. So don't forget to head over there and now, let's talk about sweet potatoes, how to storm, and how to know that they are cured. We grew about a bushel of sweet potatoes this year. I did not weigh them, so I don't know how many pounds are here. We grew a purple variety. We grew Beauregard. And there's also a red variety in here as well. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, we made a mistake in our curing. And it wasn't actually in the curing, it was forgetting we were curing. In order for your sweet potatoes to taste the best and to be able to store them, you need to cure them. And what curing is, is when you set out a food, there's a lot of different foods you can cure, and you let them sit at certain temperatures. For sweet potatoes, you want it to be about 65 to 75 degrees, minimal no higher than 85, and you want about 65% humidity. Where we live, we cure them in the barn, where it's nice and warm, it doesn't get a lot of light, but we forgot they were there this year. You cure them for about two weeks. One, it makes all the starches do what they do best so that your sweet potato is sweet, not just tastes like cardboard but it also makes them so that they're harder, so they will last in optimal storage. And you wanna store them about 50 to 65 degrees with a little bit of humidity. If a sweet potato freezes, you're done. They don't freeze well at all. So what we did, the mistake we made this year, is we literally forgot we were curing the sweet potatoes. And sometimes that happens, okay? A lot of times things like that happens. So what happened is the last few days, our weather has been in the 50s and our nights have been cold and we've had some frost and the barn doors were all left open. So when I went to pick up the sweet potatoes last night, trying to save them from all the cold we were gonna have, some of them, they were just a little bit too late. So I need to go through all of these sweet potatoes and I need to separate them into sweet potatoes that I think are gonna last in our storage area. And these will last probably till January, February if they haven't been eaten. If you have a root cellar, they will last longer than that. And then the other group is gonna be sweet potatoes that I am going to prepare and freeze dry. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I am going to look at the potatoes. Now this one has a spot that something was eaten it and it's hard. Because I'm already going to be freeze drying them, I'm gonna throw this potato into my freeze dry bin. If I wasn't planning on freeze drying, this would just be one of the first potatoes I would eat. So I need to sort this whole thing. Now, I have canned the sweet potatoes in a normal method of canning where it's in water. We've also canned them in butter. We really don't like them. They get a little bit sour for us. You could try this and you just can the sweet potato like you would potatoes. We like them freeze dried a lot better. 
We also dehydrate some, but I really prefer freeze drying because they taste so much better and so much fresher. I'm going to physically touch every single one of the sweet potatoes, checking to see if there's bites out of it or if they're rubbery or if they're broken off so that I can put them into their three baskets. Basket one is for storage, meaning they're nice and hard, they have been cured, there's no bites out of them, and they're gonna last at least until December, January timeframe if we haven't eaten them all. The other basket is ones that might be a little bit rubbery or not as perfect, and those are gonna be freeze dried. And the last basket is for ones that we're gonna eat right away. They're smaller, so I really wanna take the time to cut them up for the freeze dryer, but they're still really delicious. I wanna make sure I get every bite I can out of our sweet potato grow. When you're growing your own food, or even if you're buying it, the last thing you want is your food to go to waste. And sometimes things happen, like with our sweet potatoes. But we don't wanna lose this whole basket and almost half, eh, and almost a fourth of the sweet potatoes that we picked because we forgot to check on them. That's why we're gonna freeze dry them. Any of the sweet potatoes we didn't think were edible, we didn't even cure them. They went right to the animals, so they're not even here. But the next thing that we need to do, and this is a must, especially if you don't ever wanna buy another sweet potato again, before I put these sweet potatoes up, I need to make sure I take out good sweet potatoes to grow for next year. Sweet potatoes grow from sweet potato slips, which you make from, woo, you guessed it, a sweet potato. Your sweet potatoes that you're gonna use for your slips need to be kept in a cool, dry, dark area. And no, they will not start growing eyes and legs and all that kind of stuff like regular potatoes you're actually going to have to plant them, which I will show you in a different video. Now that we have it, we have, get this one back. I saved two nice size of each kind, two purple, two, oh, I'm not sure what those are. I've just been growing these for a long time. And I do know we have two Beauregards. And I will put them up and just let them be. I will check on them to make sure it's not they're not getting soft on any of the ends because if they start getting soft, they're gonna go bad fast. Right, let's start prepping to start freeze drying. The first step we need to do is wash these sweet potatoes. You can use a scrunger, a loofah, anything you want to just wash off all of the dirt you're not gonna peel them. And if some of the skin does come off, you're not gonna worry about it. But you wanna go through every single one to make sure if there's big chunks off of it, you're gonna break those off. If something is too small for you to be able to put in the freeze dryer, that'll go in a different basket. But we just need to get them all washed before we go on to the next step. Let's get set up for the next step. We take our sweet potatoes, we have those. We need a big pan with about three or four inches of water for blanching. We need an area for the sweet potatoes that have been blanched to be dried. I'm using an air fryer tray that we don't use in our oven and it's just on top of a towel on top of our counter. I also need to have my trays for my freeze dryer. It holds four trays at a time. I think I'm gonna be able to do two batches so I have eight trays and then I've cleaned out the freezer because I pre-freeze everything I use in the freeze dryer so it freeze dryers faster. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the sweet potatoes about a fourth of an inch to an inch, and then I'm gonna throw them in a bowl of water before I go on to the next step. Now you can use a mandolin or other things, but because these are so wonky, I'm, it's just easier to do it this way. Now any of the bad areas, we're just going to cut off. And it doesn't need to be perfect. That's all bad. Goes to the chicken. While I'm chopping up the sweet potatoes, I turn on my water so that it can come close to a boil. Now, as I'm cutting everything off of these sweet potatoes, if there's little sections that are bad for 
freeze drying, meaning I want the best of the best for freeze drying, for storing, because you don't want yucky parts of any type of food being stored for long period of times because it makes your food go bad faster. So any areas that aren't optimal for freeze drying, I am saving to be able to have for a meal. Some of it goes to the chickens if it's bad enough, but I want to keep as much food as I can for us, even if it's not being freeze dried for storage, because again, your storage food needs to be the best food that you have for storage so it lasts longer, it doesn't get rancid, it doesn't have bacteria, and it lasts much, much longer. So I'm going to finish cutting up as many of these potatoes as I can. They're going in the water just at, to be able to rinse off again, but sweet potatoes do not turn a brown color like regular potatoes. It's just something I prefer to do. Once you get your water boiling, you're just going to put a whole bunch in there. They're going to sink. Since I have purple, my per water is going to turn purple as well. You want to make sure that you don't get ahead of yourself and have too many boiling at one time and it's about two to three minutes and what you're waiting for is you want the um, sweet potatoes to be soft in the middle so after about a minute or so you're going to check them you do not need to have them completely cooked kind of like an el dante after a few minutes you just take one out and see if you can fork into it. About another minute. It's gonna depend on the curing of your sweet potatoes and if they're starting to get rubbery or if they're really good and solid, how long it's gonna to take to cook them. So we'll give that another minute. When you're testing your sweet potatoes, be careful, they are hot, you don't wanna get burned. Once you test it and your fork goes into the sweet potato, Try not to throw them on the floor like I just did. But then it's time to take them out and I just scoop them out and I put them in my tray. I spread them out so they have room to cool and to dry off. Now I see we start putting them on our trays. Um, I do have a Four Patriots. Uh, there's many other freeze dryers out there. This is just one we got because well, it was made in America and that was one of our goals. Basically, I'm setting them on my trays. You want them as close as possible, but not touching. These are the same rules as you would use in your dehydrator. And we basically, my machine takes four trays. So we'll fill four trays, which makes sense. And I always have smaller ones to kind of fit in. I want to make sure I get that bottom area. And some people don't do this, but I, I want to get maximum use out of my trays. Which means maximum of food put in here easily. All right. Once this is done, now they go in the freezer. I do everything pre-freeze. My tray needs to go into the freezer. I now have four trays in the freezer. I make sure that they're staggered so that the cold air can get through and freeze them. It's gonna take about 12 hours to freeze them. And then they will go into the freeze dryer once the machine is empty, cause I'm already freeze drying in it. And it goes back down to cold so that I can begin freeze drying again. Sweet potatoes so they're ready. We just follow the directions. Do you need more time? We need to go down below here. Now I have seven trays, so only four in right here. This is what they look, look like. And these are pretty thick. These are pretty thick. Hear that crunch? That means they're done. Now we need to process them. 
The sweet potatoes are now done from the freeze dryer and this is what they look like. They're pretty crunchy. You can hear them snap. Let's see what they taste like. Not too bad like this. I like them. You might not. But at the end of the video, I will show you how to rehydrate them and what you can do with them. For right now, you need to get these sweet potatoes processed as quickly as possible. Supplies to processing. The supplies I need in order to process the sweet potatoes for short-term storage and long-term short storage. Short-term means three to six months, long-term more than that. Canning jar, lid, ring, oxygen absorbers, and then the kit that goes to pull out the air, vacuum sealer. I also have a flat iron and some Ilor bags. Since I have seven trays, some of them are gonna go into a jar and some of them are gonna go into these Mylar bags and get sealed. Let's get started. So for the jar, I basically just put them in the jar. Pretty simple. I am going to keep some of these out to show you how to rehydrate them. Hopefully not too many get on the floor. Because these are tiny, I can fit more into them, the jar. The larger ones that are being freeze dried right now, they take up more space. Now, I don't care that we have different color sweet potatoes and different shapes and all that. Shake it down. You want to get the max amount you can in. I do reuse my lids when I'm vacuum sealing because they don't do any damage to them. When you're using oxygen, when you're using oxygen absorbers, you do need to move quite quickly. This this is a quart. It takes between 200 and 300 cc. These are 100 cc. I'm going to put three of them in there just to be sure. Some people do not use the vacuum sealer. They just use the lids, and they do get sucked out. I'm going to close that. Just to be sure. It looks like my vacuum sealer has finally died. Not good. I'm going to seal this. The oxygen absorbers will help pull out. I'm going to see if this will work really quick. Nope. My vacuum sealer has been on the fritz. It does not like to work how I want. That is on my list of things to replace. But right now, I'm gonna close them. The oxygen absorbers, I need to really watch because they get too much oxygen in it. This little tab in here will turn bright pink on mine. It's not there, so we're safe still. Let's see if we can get that going. It was plugged in, but we're gonna set up the rest. We will come back to our vacuum sealer. I'm using, I believe these are quart size. Mylar, they are lined with a plastic film. These are metal. They don't have a zigzag plastic. You could, Use your vacuum sealer in the plastic with these and they would seal. They do have some vacuum seal mylar available now as well. I just have so many of these. We're going to use all of them before I get any more. Now the type I get, they're open on the bottom, but the top when you open it, 
it's re-zippable. And I'm going to put as many as I can in each bag. Again, these are small, so I'm going to be able to fit more in these than if I had large ones. These are very light. When you freeze dry, you do not lose space, but you do lose weight. So I wanna make sure I can close this. All the way down. I have a lot of room. First thing I do is I seal halfway. What this does, this is allows me to have a way to suck out more air and put in my oxygen absorbers. It's pretty cool. I do the same amount in these. Sometimes I do an extra one, which I am going to do. Because I don't expect to get to these for quite a while. And I just stick these in there quickly. Shake them down. Push as much of the air out as I can and reseal it. The oxygen is what helps food deteriorate. So this one is done. These sometimes will suck in more air from the oxygen absorbers and sometimes not so much. But if you get as much air out as you can, you have a nice seal. And this is just, you know, a flat iron, literally. So, let's see if the um, sealer is working now. No guarantees. It says it's green. It says it's working. When this was brand new before I dropped it and had to duct tape it, I would do this and within about two or three seconds it would be sealed. Now it just sounds like a really old motor. Let's see if it sealed. It did. And the poppy part of the lid is down as well. So what happens if you want to eat sweet potatoes more than just popping them in your mouth from freeze dry? You can rehydrate them. I love putting sweet potatoes into my stews and soups, especially if it's a little leftovers because then it's a different flavoring the next day. But here I have five small pieces. If I had a big one, it would be the same thing. I'm going to show you with hot water. Now, if in a soup or stew, it's not going to matter how much water. If you're just trying to rehydrate them a little bit, I do it until they're almost covered. And why would you just rehydrate them like this without throwing them into a super stew? Because you want to make a meal. You know, maybe you want to mash them up. And they're going to take a few minutes. Now, boiling water works better. I'm just using hot water. And they'll start rehydrating. I make sure I have enough water in there and we're going to let them sit. And you can check them one of two ways. You can poke them. Now, you go through it and it feels like it's crunchy, then they're not done yet. If it goes through it, like this is not quite done. Finally, eight minutes later, they are soft. fully hydrated. So it took eight minutes to get them to be soft and rehydrated. Still tastes like a sweet potato. They work so much better when you're throwing them into a chili or a stew or boiling water because then you're cooking it, it, they will rehydrate a little bit quicker 
than just putting them in a bowl of water with hot water. So this is how I saved part of our sweet potato crop that would have gone bad because they weren't cured properly because, well, as I said earlier, we basically forgot about it. Thanks for watching. I hope you got something out of this video. Remember, whoever controls your food controls you. So buy local, grow your own, create, store. You can do it. Find your own food freedom and be the healthiest, happiest homesteading you. Until next time, we'll see ya. Bye now.